What's going on guys? So, Will Sherland here with Gutter Fighting Secrets, DJ with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Uh, obviously, you guys know my background, 15 plus years of close quarter fighting experience, uh, 15 plus years of active military and close protection experience over here amongst other things. So, what we want to focus on today is active knife defense. DJ and I were talking about this yesterday. We got in from you know some winter warfare training that we were doing out here in Missouri, and we were discussing uh, what's going into the um, curriculum for the certification process for modern gutter fighting. We're working hard on that right now. We did some great filming yesterday, and we were discussing about the knife portion. We were talking back and forth about both of our experience with knife defense and stuff like that. We were running ideas by each other. So I figured I'd bring it to you guys today, throw one valid technique out there. Now, what we need to remember with knife fighting, or should I say knife defense, is that your best defense against the knife, and this is echoing what Colonel Fairburn would have said and talked about, is that your best defense against the knife is to run away, get the hell out of there. Uh, edge weapons are no joke, all right? DJ carries a knife that's like sharper than any fucking thing I've ever felt my entire fucking life, like for real. Uh, pardon my language, but it's that serious. So, um, your best defense is to grab a chair, right? Smash the guy and get out if you can. It's only a last ditch effort for survival to be doing these hand against knife techniques. I highly discourage you guys from doing it. That's why we don't teach a lot of these hand against knife techniques, because frankly, a lot of them out there are very, um, they're wishful thinking, should I say. Right, you get to the guy, like there's, DJ's got this knife remote and he comes at me and just do a straight stab, right? If I come here and block it, right, he's obviously gonna cut me. But you see in like a lot of the guys teaching out there, Krav, not so much Krav, but other techniques. So come out and hold it. They do like this and then they step around and they break it over their shoulder. But in reality, uh, not only is he gonna cut me when I try to do this, but I'm also gonna go ahead and stab at me, right? And I'm also gonna go ahead, and when I try to come here, Deej, what are you gonna do, man? You're just gonna, and then stab the shit out of me, right? So like, these techniques look cool in Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid or whatever, but in real life, um, in most situations, they're, they're not gonna work out as well as we had hoped. Exactly. So one thing that generally happens when we see real life knife attacks is that prison style stabbing from kind of down around the hip region, right? Um, that's how it generally starts. Like, um, I may be cognizant of it, I may not be. This is why we talk about, like in DJ's world, and you know, part of my old world was executive protection, right? Or close protection. Watch the hands, right? You're always watching where people's hands are going and what's, you know, where they're reaching, right? So we really need to be aware of that. Yep. The last thing I want is someone to reach in their pocket and start talking to me and then come out with a fucking knife. So as soon as I see that thing come out, I need to be aware. Right? As soon as I see hands come out of pockets, I'm generally ready that something's gonna come out with it. Yeah. So when that happens, and he's gonna try for uh, out of the pocket, kind of just thrust at me, but I have to remember that this thrust isn't going to be this. It's gonna be this. And he's gonna work his way probably up the center line. So I wanna stop that from happening as, as quickly as possible. Now, to echo what Krav and the guys that I work with in Israel would always talk about is you stop and hit at the same time, right? And this is this is a valid technique and it's one way to give us a little bit of advantage. So DJ comes out of the pocket knife and I stop and I hit at the same time. Now where am I going to and what am I trying to do with the stop? I'm going for the crook of the elbow. Crook of the elbow is a very solid way to temporarily stop somebody from coming at you. Is it going to work? No, because he can pull back and execute another stab. But we only need that to stop for a split second to try to go on the offensive. We wanna take somebody and make them from the bully mentality into a victim mentality within a matter of seconds. That's what we're aiming for. As he comes out of the pocket, I'm ready for something. Oh shit, at night, I come here and I immediately put the palm of my hand into his face. Now from there, from the palm of the hand, we can just slap and retract or we can slap and start digging our um, fingers into the eyes, right? If we have time, generally speaking, what we've found though, is that gross motor, motor skills being what they are, is that even if you've trained the chin jab with the claw into the eyes a bunch of times, what's gonna happen is this. Oh shit, all right? It's just a gross motor skill to like touch something and, and, and bring it back. That's, even with me with all of my years of training, 
It's still just something that I typically do. You either see that or you see this. Ah, and you just keep pressing in, right? A lot of street fights we see, a lot of home um, domestic situations, we see a lot of this. You actively try to push something away from you. So we can take advantage of what we know human gross motor skills look like and just simply stop the hit, come in here, push, 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 and knee strike. All right, now that's gonna be the first solid base of this technique. It's the first process of getting their mind off the victor mentality and into the victim mentality, right? You wanna distract them from the fact that they were trying to stab you. Now you gotta remember, anyone who's actively trying to stab you is hopped up on drugs, hopped up on adrenaline, and just so fucking like crazy that this alone is not going to stop them, all right? In no way, shape, or form. So we need to start being able to control this knife. Now what we can do from here, go ahead, stop, hit, here, here. Now what we can do is actively start trying to get down into the, um, into the wrist. Now a double grip, a two on one, is what we're going for. I wouldn't suggest trying to fuck with the sleeve. Some people will tell you, like, you know, to echo judo, jujitsu type sentiment, to come with the sleeve and try to come past it like this, right? And get a break or just, you know, get a flip. But again, right? Exactly. Just switch hands. He's going to do it and he's going to stab my neck and stab me and I'll die soon after. So what I want to do instead is try to get a two-on-one solid grip. So boom, boom, solid grip. Now again, I'm angling my body. So if he tries to reach for this knife, he can't. I'm blocking it, all right? Now what I want to do is I want to try to get this out of his hand. Now I can throw knees at the hand, but I have to be cognizant of the fact that if I'm throwing a knee here, he's going to actively be trying to cut this. Even if I come here, he's going to actively be trying to cut that, especially a guy like Deej who's got knife fighting experience. It doesn't matter. Guys, guys are looking at YouTube and they're learning knife fighting. You don't have to fucking go to classes anymore to get trained. What are you guys doing right now? You're getting trained by me and Deej, uh, and you're not even having to step foot in a dojo. So the days of, oh, well, my partner's probably, my opponent's probably not trained. I'm sorry, those days are done. Everybody's got some level of training right now just from breaking YouTube. So we got to be aware of that. Even if you're throwing knees, like the old techniques of, bah, bah, like that's, that was once valid. It's less valid these days. You just have to be careful. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna get cut in a knife fight, but let's try to get less cut than more, right? So, we come in here, we see that coming out. Oh shit, one, two, two on one grip. I want to immediately start moving to the side here and I want to take his hand with me. Now what I want to do is keep it pressed, right? And even if I don't get elbow lockout, like what I can do is press my chest into here and try to like break his elbow, but a lot of the times, in real life, that's not going to happen. He's going to start turning into me more than likely, right? What I want to do is just simply try to control this other hand, and I want to try to drag this knife down. I want to try to get it down. Now, they say, don't go to the ground in a street fight, but look, you got to do what you got to do. As I'm going down here, I want to actively be trying to try to get this out of his grip. Now, I don't know. I think this was actually blocking us here, so let's do that one more time. Yeah, but... So he comes out, you stop the hit, you take his mind off that. We're coming here with the two-on-one blocking his ability to get in. Now he's obviously going to be trying to stab actively at me, so I have to be quick. I want to circle around, and as I circle, I really want to make sure that he's not able to get this. So I'm going to try to either control here, or at least control here enough so that he's not able to. Now when I say go to the ground, why I'm saying that is because we want to start getting his momentum going this way. This is way better than trying to fiddle with it here while he hits me in the face or grabs the knife away and tries to stab. But if I get his momentum going down, then I can start to take the, take the odds in my favor, right? So as we go down, we then use that momentum and try to get either fingertip to fingertip grip and pry it, or we simply try to rip it away. Cognizant again of the fact that we might get cut on the blade as we try to rip. But if we get this thing away and out of his grip, then we can start surviving, right? Um, exactly. That's one way that we can do this. So any thoughts on that kind of process, Deej? So yeah, the, like you saying, the key is to get your body in between the, uh, the adversary or the threat's hands. 
So you don't want him to be able to switch hands. That's a big thing, especially people who have knife fighting training. That's, that's just common sense to be able to switch up quickly and do what you need to do. So uh, that, along with the violence of action of getting that spread out, getting torsion on the limb and getting it down so that you can ground that blade to prevent it from affecting the area elsewise is super important. And uh, the other thing to remember with people that don't have knife fighting training, a lot of the time is what's gonna happen is that, again, they're gonna try that maybe that prison, prison shank style, or they're gonna come with an overhead stab type of thing. It's, it's just the most common thing um, out of any, all the police knife footage that you see, knife on gun and all that, all the prison footage of all the shanking out there, a lot of that knife fighting stuff, that's what you're going to see are those two styles of stabbing. So using the process like this to be able to separate access from hand, uh, from hand to hand and getting that knife down and controlled onto the ground is the most important thing. Uh, like he was also saying, it is inevitable that you're going to get cut, whether it's empty-handed versus a knife, knife versus a knife, or even a gun versus a knife within that 21 to 15 foot rule. It's inevitable that you're going to get cut in some way or another. So visual learning is good, but you do need to go and train and apply yourself yeah. to be able to conquer this threat. If you're not training, you're not really learning, guys, and that's so important. You know, it, it, don't just watch our stuff and think you got it because you don't. I'm going to tell you that straight up. Uh, but you watch our stuff, you practice it enough, you'll start to get it. And that's why we got the certification process coming up here, Deej, and, and this is going to be really good for you guys. So stand by for that. Before we close out, we got to do one more of this technique with a different variation just for the guys out there who say, I like that, I'd like to learn a little bit more. And if you really want more of this stuff, it's all going to be, again, in the membership, in the certification process on GoToFightingSecrets.com. Guys, it's not there yet, so you've got to go ahead and join, subscribe, so we can send you an email when it does deploy. All right? You don't, you don't want to miss this. This is straight military close quarters combative. So let's get into it. Um, we can, same thing, right? We come here. It comes out of the pocket. I'm ready for it. Oh shit, here, and I'm coming here with a two-on-one. Now instead of bothering with all of that circling around, what I can simply do is from the two-on-one, is I can straight just take a knee. Yeah. And when I take a knee, it's really important that we get the biomechanics of this down, or the body mechanics, is I'm not just kneeling because he's going to be fighting it. I'm literally yanking his shoulder out of his socket if I can, and kneeling. Now from there, I'm going to, again, blade my body so that he can't get freaking, you know, the knife back. Yep. He's going to be trying to hit me, but that's okay. I'd rather take hits than stabs. From there, I'm going to take a fingertip to fingertip grip, and I'm going to just simply try to pry this away. Once I've got it, obviously I can be commando and ha -ya! or I can simply get the fuck back. And I know I got cut off a little in that shot. Or I can simply get, get back and make distance and space knowing that, he has one less weapon on him. So those are two um, solid kind of methodologies that we teach. Again, we don't bother with all of the, you know, the this and the this and the that because it doesn't work. It and will get you stabbed. Yeah, <laughs> it'll get you killed. And, and guys, there's guys out there teaching this stuff who they really don't care if you get killed. Um, we need people who are of solid moral character out there. So hopefully we can help you become a little bit more survivable a little bit more of a hard target. That's what all of this military close quarters combat is, is to hopefully get you out of a situation alive enough to fight the next day. So, Deej, any last minute thoughts closing out? No, I think, uh, I, th I think we covered it pretty well there. All right, until next time, guys, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense, and stay adaptive and stay lethal. Oh, man! You got me! That wasn't part of the game! <laughs>